So it's my favorite time of year. It is football season. We're talking about spring games. Brennan Armstrong is a new face for NC State, but will he be able to excel in his new home now that he has maybe a better offensive coordinator and a new leader under the helm? Let's talk about it on today's show. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked on ACC. It might be one of the favorite times for some of our hosts here today as we talk through NC State. I know you guys have all been waiting for the anticipation of Brennan Armstrong, former Virginia quarterback who will now be QB1 for the pack. We'll talk about what we think he'll actually do during his time in Raleigh. Kenton Gibbs, I'm sure, has plenty of thoughts around that bad boy, so we'll talk about all of that here on today's show. Make sure that you are tuning in from wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as subscribing on our YouTube channel. We're over a 1,000, but 2,000 looks even better. So, hey, do what you do. Tell a friend and all of that good stuff. Kenton, how are you feeling? You know... I'm gonna tell you this. Um, I this this weekend was was a very interesting one for many reasons. Some to be happy about, some not so happy about. Now I may have to get into the not so happy parts on today, but that's neither here nor there. So this past weekend, NC State held their spring game, one of the first of many around the ACC. We'll talk about each of these teams as we've already given you context into Clemson and North Carolina. Those are the two teams that faced off on last year's ACC championship game. So we wanted to preview and talk through those programs. But NC State is the first on the docket as we prep for a 2023 football season that should be a great one. A lot of good programs are having a lot of you know turnkey, finding new starters, new leaders, and Brennan Armstrong happens to be the one for NC State. We know they were in desperate need of a quarterback last season. They went through the ringer. They found, you know, QB one, two, three, four, five, six sometimes, and they were able to make it happen in some games. In some games, they looked, you know, less than stellar. But now that Brennan Armstrong is here with a new offensive coordinator, Tim Beck has gone to Coastal Carolina. Pack seems to be in good shape, allegedly. So let's talk about the offense. Mm -hmm. See, this is the part that I – you know, this is the part that I didn't want to talk about because on Locked On Wolfpack, if you are a listener, I talked about how crazy the offense was going to look, how great Brennan Armstrong was looking, how MJ Morris was looking good. So when both showed flashes, don't get me wrong, both guys showed moments of where you're like, ah, okay, I see it. But overall, the weather seemed to get to both of them. The weather seemed to get to the offenses overall. It, it seemed – to be a time where it was just like, what are we doing here in terms of, I believe both quarterbacks threw pick sixes as well. There was, this wasn't the easy game. This, that this could be expected not- in the elements though. Let's, let's set the scene. It was very heavily raining throughout the entire day of the spring game. So for those of you who are saying, Oh, well, what could it have been like? Was it just a couple missed? People have bad throws set the scene properly. It was some heavy rain that got in the way of these quarterbacks. Can't it? Well, nice. absolutely. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that the, the rain was a part of it. But I'm saying mm-hmm. that these this is a situation where you look at both guys and you kind of saw that MJ is the more talented of the two. But Brennan Armstrong is more familiar with the system. He, You could tell huh. he was making the reads quicker, getting the ball out of his hands a little more quickly. And it, it kind of puts you in that interesting space of – what do you do here, right? Because Brennan Armstrong, again, he knew the reads to make. He knew where the ball should go right away. However, there were certain things that MJ Morris is doing where you just you can't coach it. You can't. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He knew the reads, but did he execute them well? Tell the truth, Shane the Devil. Now, this is a QB in his fifth year. I t- Op- I operating you? off 1.5 good shoulders. So did well, he me- execute the reads? Well, now nah, you you went you jumped too fast to uh, MJ. I want you to go back, give a, a true assessment of Brendan Armstrong. Please and thank you for the group. Let me uh, quote a a member, a very prominent member 
of the Wolfpack staff, a, a formal, a actually not a former Wolfpack alum, a Wolfpack alum uh, who has meant so much to that program for the last about two decades, uh, D'Antonio Thunder Burnett. You pat him on the butt, you pull back a handful of crap. I taught everybody, I told everybody who would listen about how crazy this offense looked with Brendan Armstrong and and I reuniting. And, you know, I, I thought, thought we were finna play our pizzas and our reunited and it feels so good. I thought it was going to be great. Mm-hmm. The next thing you know, you're right, Candace. Brandon Armstrong did not execute well at many points during that spring. So did he look like did he look like Cam Newton, right, where he is known to be a good quarterback, but he's more of a shell of his former self? Like, Brandon Armstrong is a 4,000-yard quarterback, right? He has had moments and flashes where he has been one of the best quarterbacks in our league, arguably, you know, the best, the best. So did he look like a shell of himself? Or it's spring game, it's raining, it was just a rough go. Once the fall hits, he'll be all right. I mean, I, I believe that he'll be all right when the fall hits. And also, here's another thing. This is spring ball. Nobody is fully opening up their playbook for spring ball. Nobody is truly getting in there Louis Duffel for spring ball. But if he can't hit the basics, I'm scared about the Louis. If you can't rock with the pay list, how am I going to trust you with the Louis? Listen, all I'm saying is this. Sometimes he finessed you with the Aldo bag. That's what it was. That's the that's, Louis okay. opens up, the, the Louis play calling opens it up so much that you don't really need to be super accurate, super precise, super on time. Huh. Sometimes he was, that's Lewis. he was rocking with the Louis bag. Got it. The Got Louis it. Vallone. The, the Louis, you know, the, the one that you get off Fifth Street. But listen. Louis Vallone. Okay. The, you know the one that I'm talking about. The one that's at the swap mm-hmm. meet. The one that, you know. Mm-hmm. The, the L and the V is a little too, it's a slightly Don't off. Yeah, yeah. Don't look too close. It's all the uh-huh. same. It's all the mm-hmm. same. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. again, here's the thing. I have, I still hold out hope here because again, you're looking at a situation where um, this is spring ball. This is a cold, wet, rainy day, which I'm sorry to tell you, I've been living in Raleigh for nearly a decade now. There aren't that many cold, wet, rainy days during the fall. That is not typical fall weather for Raleigh, North Carolina, or for most of the other places you'll be playing um, this this fall. So, you know, that's this. So don't hit the panic button on Brennan Armstrong just yet. Yeah, and the crazy part is the worst thing that MJ Morris did was handle snaps and, and kind of adjust with the weather as well. So, you know, again, there were some passes. Who that would be made. your QB1? <sighs> oh, boy. Stop it and go ahead and do it. Tell the truth, Shane. That, that's what we're doing today on this show. I'm cutting you off because I want you to get to the meat. You over here being dramatic. Who would be your QB1 guy, dog? You're making me feel like Marshall from Love is Blind. Can I speak my truth clear? Can I speak my truth clear? If I had to pick, based on the performances that I saw in the spring game, despite now, granted, with the information that I have, the full totality, I heard that the offense looks absolutely crazy with Brendan Armstrong mm-hmm. at the helm. So with that information, I would go with Brendan Armstrong. Mm-hmm. However, okay. based on okay. the performances that I saw Saturday, mm-hmm. I would – I would have to go in the camp with MJ Morris as my QB1. I'd have to go in the oh camp. Oh my with lord. Him. Oh lord. So how many <laughs> games is Brendan Armstrong? How many games is Brendan Armstrong start this season before he's benched? I mean, here's the thing. And here here's the thing. Do you if do you I, ride out with him? Here's here's my belief here. I'm so coach Thomas Wilcher of Cast Tech when I was a, uh, I believe I was either a freshman or a sophomore, he made it very clear to us like, "Hey, it was freshman year." He said, if I'm going to lose, I'm not going to lose with old guys. I'm going to lose with a new regime that's learning how to win, not you old guys that should have already learned and all that good stuff. So if Brennan Armstrong is holding down the fort, you know, this team is winning, they beat Notre Dame or very competitive and the offense isn't the reason that they lose that game, they're right there. I don't see a reason to bench him. However... (laughs) Hmm. However, if things don't go that way, you got a young man back there with an arm and some legs that if you can, well, you know, if, if yeah. again, I'm I'm not kidding when I say the worst thing I saw from MJ is his ability to handle the snaps, which, by the way, the starting center was out as well. So 
you know, your MJ was dealing with a third string center and mm-hmm. the, the weather that's struggling to maintain the snap a little bit. And that mm-hmm. was his biggest fault. Other than that, again, you know, I mean, I'm not saying he was perfect. I'm not saying that by any means, because I believe he threw a pick six as well, pick six as well on a very bad read. It showed a little bit of that inexperience. But I gotta tell you, I'm not about to lose with the fifth year guy. I'm not gonna do that. If I'm gonna go out well, that way, technic- technically, technically, Brennan is the newer guy to the NC State system than MJ because MJ was doing it last. Year. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, MJ I'm trying, I'm trying never to- played with a nine, so he's technically newer to the system than Brennan. Last year, right, Tim but Beck was the sure, but I'm talking about NC State. Period. I'm not talking about the coordinator relationship. I ain't talking about it. I'm talking about being on NC State's football team. Well, that's not Brennan Armstrong I mean, is more. Okay, okay. I, I was trying to help the boy, but we ain't gonna help the boy. If you want to figure out <laughs> and pick, is it going to be Brendan Armstrong or MJ Morris? Who is going to be QB one when they go into fall camp or when they go into the season? Even make sure you hit up our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. If you're into MLB, if you're into ACC baseball, they have got the plan for you. Just go to FanDuel.com/slash/lockedon to sign up today. Play Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball. We're rocking and rolling with Kenton Gibbs. We're talking through NC State spring game they had this past weekend. And MJ Morris is Kenton's QB1. But on paper, you got to go with the guy you bring in as a graduate transfer. And it will be Brennan Armstrong under new offensive coordinator, Danae. As we mentioned, Tim Beck, Kenton's also favorite, has headed to Coastal Carolina. But NC State has a very early challenger in front of them. They start out with a UConn team that's not a scrub. Right, they had a good season last season, so that'd be a quick pop in the mouth potentially. We also saw them struggle last season early against ECU, so it's not crazy to think that if they play with their food, they could potentially see an opening game week loss. Fair to say, there, there are some ACC fans that will look at you and say, Candace is crazy, she's out of her mind. NC State and UConn played last year, and NC State blew them out by all the points in the world. That was UConn's worst loss of the season. They never lost that bad for the entirety of the season. So let's let's start there. And then moving forward from there, um, if you watched that game against UConn last year, the first play of the game was a jump ball down the sideline to uh, a man by the name of Thayer Thomas, who is no longer with the pack. Wildly impactful. I truly, if you watched the games – and. Hey, even if you look at the box scores, you would see that man's name is all through the the record books in terms of NC State receiver. You name it, he's probably in the top five of every category. So this is a team that is, you know, Timmons and Smith bring something different. Those two, whoo, they could peel your top off like a good barber. But with that being said, with that being said, I mean, again, you can't play around with uh, UConn. You're going up to UConn, it's not – the most dangerous territory or the the toughest road challenge that you'll have. But that is a game that if you think you're going to sleepwalk up in there and sleepwalk out with a win, you could be sorely mistaken. Absolutely agree. And so you go into UConn trying to get that first good dub, and then you face a formidable foe in Sam Hartman, who is transferred to Notre Dame, a former Wake Forest quarterback, now part of Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They will be – at NC State, but a Notre Dame team that a lot of people argue didn't get just due last season. They're turning things around with the quarterback now. Could it be Marcus Freeman in the boys' year? I'm going to tell you, that game is going to answer a lot of questions about a lot of folks. A lot of questions about a lot of folks. Because (laughs) game one game one for NC State, they roll over UConn. Then you won't get a lot of answers, right? Like if you're physically dominating the team, if you're running the ball for seven, eight yards a pop, your defense, by the way, the defense looked phenomenal in that spring game. I know we're talking about the quarterbacks, but boy, that first string defense looked crazy. Just some nasty, nasty work. But well, not. that's good considering the, how many defensive weapons they lost. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But now, 
when you when you look at this Notre Dame game, you get to answer the question of how good is your defense in replacing all those players, right? That's that's going to be a question that needs to get answered. Another question that's going to get answered is Sam Hartman actually him, or was it the long mesh and six five receivers that made him look like something that he wasn't? And then you're also going to have the the layer of what is the ceiling for this team? What is the ceiling for this NC State team? Because to me, I don't see a world where um, they get taken out back and and whooped like they stole something by Notre Dame and they still come away with eight to nine wins on the season. I don't see a world where that happens. Not because I don't think that Notre Dame is good, but I think that there is the conversation that we're having about who's your starter, MJ or Brendan and all that. Those types of things get exacerbated when things go wrong. Just as winning covers over a multitude of sins, losing does the exact opposite. Losing reveals problems that aren't even there. And all of a sudden, nobody likes anybody, and the jokes aren't as funny, the food ain't as good, the ice ain't as cold, because you're losing. And so um, that game is going to answer a lot of questions, and it will also answer the, a lot of questions about NC State in terms of who's going to be the guy in terms of your guys on the perimeter to step up offensively yeah who's going to be your guy to make plays aside from Aiden White Tayshawn Smith my Neo my good brother in the bomb we've been waiting on him for some time he runs one of the fastest 10 yard splits in the ACC has a 40 inch vertical 6-2 corner long all that good stuff can he stay can healthy he enough? can he stay okay. healthy enough that's the question when he's on the field he does good things but he he has had multiple surgery so shoulder surgeries you've got to replace a safety in Tanner Engle that you're like What's going on? How do we do that? You also have to replace a, a safety of Cyrus Fagan. That was all, you name it, you turn on the tape, he was around the ball, and a, a guy like Drake Thomas. So the question is, how good is this team overall in a lot of regards? You're going to get the answers for it in that game. Well, isn't this, we'll call this an expose, if you will, because you clearly are lining it all up for us in this Notre Dame bad way. And that's only game two, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like it. And I mean, honestly, Brendan Armstrong versus Sam Hartman, we're going to real find out, you know, expose these hoes. Who, who really is about that action? I, I'm loving it. Can't wait. And Have I, that circled on the calendar. And I'll tell you this. I could also be wrong. And this game could be a one-off where one team just plays wildly well and the other plays wildly poor either direction yeah, now. Well, of course but, that's why they play the know, game yeah of course of course but that's why we give way off, too early season predictions absolutely but if i'm going off a trend here that's the type of game that for either team could build a lot of momentum one way or the other sure and then build the momentum and then go play vmi which like easy dub not going to be too difficult don't find any struggle. But now you got to face off against uh, your old friend here when Brennan Armstrong goes up to Charlottesville to take on Virginia. And they have a new quarterback at the helm that we'll talk about this week. But you take on Tony Elliott. You take on the Cavaliers. Can you hand them an L and continue their struggling start to Elliott's tenure? I mean this very genuinely. And I don't mean this with uh, any disrespect. If you lose to Tony Elliott and Virginia, some heads need to roll. Some starters need to not be starting the following week. This is no disrespect to Elliott and company. That team, aside from the tragedy at the end of the year, that team was a train wreck. Because mm -hmm. like that, there's no joking about that. There's nothing funny about There's nothing. I'm talking about pre that moment. This team, that UVA team was still a train wreck in a lot of regards. Yeah. So yeah. if you lose to them, heads need to roll. <laughs> I hear you, and I receive. Then the Pack go back home. They face off against a former Atlantic foe. We all know that the divisions no longer exist here for the ACC, but they'll face off against Louisville, which I feel like is going to be a great matchup because Louisville brings in a new coach, a coach who's familiar with the program, and now he is finding himself trying to rebuild what was broken down by Satterfield and the boys. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Cardinals bounce back this season. But NC State, this is a good gut check, you know, second conference game of, hey, what are we doing here? You know, here's the thing. NC State's in such a precarious position in a lot of these games because, like, their schedule actually does work out in a very favorable way, right? Like, let's just say you play Notre Dame tight and you lose that game. Or even if Notre Dame takes you to the woodshed, how many of these games do you actually expect to be close? You have 
um, Brom in year one. You have Elliott who like last year, I don't, and even before last year, I didn't see anything to, to indicate like he'll be a great. Uh, All right, enough jumping on Elliott. Next, next, next. Come on. I'm just saying you got a UConn team that, again, while they got better after the last time they played you, the last time they played you, you beat them by about 50. Like you hung a 50 people. Not the same UConn team. Not the same UConn sure. team. But I'm saying that this schedule works out very favorably for them. You got VMI. So they basically well. have, they have a, they have a Charmin start is what you're saying. You better take advantage of it is what I'm saying because these the following <laughs> games, the following games that, you know, that, that temperature starts to turn up a little bit. So, uh, but I, I think that this is, again, you know, first year at Louisville, first year as a head coach, you need to be able to take advantage and win a game like this if you're uh, Coach Doran in NC State. 100%. So let's talk about the temperature turn-up games. Marshall at home, you'll face off against them. Marshall team that beat Notre Dame last season. They have a really good coach, and I think they have a high-energy team. They know they can beat you. They don't care what conference you're in. They don't care what program, all the things. Like They're a very good program, and that's going to be a good gut-check game for NC State. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, I mean, the the – the interesting thing about that game is this. You look at how they beat Notre Dame last year and what was Notre Dame, you know, what was their thing? We're big, we're physical, we're going to run the ball. We're going to line up, we're going to use Mayer in the run game, we're going to use him in the passing game, we're going to run the ball. They got beat at the point. They got beat at the point of contact. I'm not sure if NC State's offensive line is as good as Notre Dame's was last year. I'm not sure about it. I'm not going to tell you with 100% certainty, oh, yeah, it, it should be no problem running the game. So this is what I mean, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me there. This could be a temperature turn-up type of game where it's like, all right, now there are some serious questions being asked, you know, in, in, in terms of you ran through a, a, a Charmin soft schedule so far and you're running into some serious comp now. Well, speaking of serious comp, they'll travel to Durham, North Carolina and face off against the Duke Blue Devils who if all of you who listen to the show faithfully know last season, Kenton was unwise enough to bet me that the Duke blue devils would not win six games of their season. Now they are only won six games, but Kenton had to pay me $150 as well as our former friend, Drizzy Drake locked on Seminoles, another 150. So your girl made out like a bandit because nobody believed that I thought Duke was a sleeping giant. And whoop, there it was. Now, will they be a sleeping giant? Who knows? But I know that Riley Leonard is not someone to sleep on. I think that he is an excellent young man at the quarterback position. And we're talking about quarterbacks here on the show today. They do very basic fundamental stuff, but they fundamentally figured out how to win. Who could have known? that the Coastal was going to be that bad. See, Who could have it's like you could have never – you can't give me credit. You can't give me credit for, like, being like, hey, Kim is You were right. You were right. Okay. I, will, okay. I will 100% concede. Every Thank knee must bow and tongue must confess that Candace Please. Cooper knew the Coastal the best. We all got to give her her props. She did I'm a Coastal thing. girl. I, I've been, I was studying the Coastal now. With that being said, the reasons I'm going uh -huh. So if you want to double that, if you want to run that back, I'll happily do so. That is, you want well when we get to the NC, when we get to Duke oh. Spring game, which is one of the latter ones, we absolutely can talk about a schedule and put oh, some money up. Oh, oh okay. Happily. Listen, you you enjoy being broke. That's fine with me. We oh, can run it back. We, we can double or nothing. Okay. I'm a millennial, baby. We never have money. We're we all love being broke. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Um after this, yeah, go ahead. This this Duke NC State matchup is is really it's going to be a good one. Um, again, Duke is the, – the question is, for a lot of these Coastal teams, um, was it actually the Coastal that made some of y'all look good or are you actually just a good team? Leonard is a, a good quarterback. He had moments and flashes where you looked up and you're like, oh, man, he can do it. And the question for Duke and Elko and that team is, again, can you sustain this against Atlantic teams? Now, on the flip side of that, uh, Coach Dorn, people are going to be looking at you, brother, saying, "Now nah, you've been talking about wanting to have some in-state matchups, and here you go." Exactly, you sat up here and called him out. And said, "Oh, I want to play all the teams in state. It's a shame that we you don't know, get the." You better walk about it, Durham, with, a, with your head held high in the W, brother. You better walk about it there with a W. 
A hundred percent. Talking about the next matchups here, tough games for NC State Clemson. Playing them at home, we all know how it went last year for them. It was a tough showing for NC State. We knew they didn't have the horses in the stable. This year may look no different, but this Clemson team is not going to be any chumps. So will this be a hype-worthy game for the Wolfpack? Why would they make this their homecoming? That's just <laughs> – because <laughs> it's either going to be exciting, right? It's either going to be thrilling. It's going to be all the alumni back. They need all the help they can get. See, Mac yeah. Brown was complaining about the schedule. If I was doing, I would have been calling the ACC right away. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Why are we not I, playing VMI? <laughs> Excuse them too. Please and thank you. Please and right. th no, but this is I'm, this, yeah. Clemson, this is a Clemson team that just they they just reload. You know what I mean? They don't really rebuild. You think to yourself, oh, they're losing Brissy, they're losing uh, Miles Murphy, they're losing so much, and and yet I have a feeling they'll be fine. I have, a, and by this time in the season, strong we'll inkling. have, a, yeah, 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 we'll have a, a a very strong inclination as to whether or not K. Klubnik is the real thing, as to whether or not Brendan Armstrong is the real thing, as to whether or not MJ is taking that spot already. We'll have some very, we'll have a lot more clarity about all of these things than we do right now. Does Will Shipley need a second back in that backfield? Hey, what does NC State's backfield look like? Because, you know, bringing back all the guys that you have from last year, the question becomes, all right, you should have a three-headed monster with Allen, Sumo, and Houston. What do they look like? What does this offensive line look like? So you should have more clarity by this point in time. And, you know, hopefully this will be a good homecoming for uh, NC State. All right, as we roll through Miami facing off against NC State next matchup, Miami has had NC State's number past a couple jokers out because for whatever reason, Doran can't figure out a will in a way to beat these bad boys. You know, this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those games that this is this is gonna be a, a, a sniff test game to me. So many of the Miami games, you tell yourself NC State can't lose this game, and they say, wanna bet? Wanna bet? Last time when they went down to Coral Gables, I will – I Devin Carter, God bless his heart. I hope he does great up in Happy Valley. I hope that uh, Coach Franklin does all the great things with him and he goes off and, and you know, puts up as many touchdowns, receiving yards, and all that as his heart delights. When he dropped that ball on third down on that drag across the field, I, I, I saw right then, I said, oh, this team ain't going to win this game. This is not a serious operation. And that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, again, this is going to be a, a situation where Coach Doran, can you take advantage of a situation where Crystal Ball is just barely establishing and starting his culture in that program? You're on year what, 10? You're on year 10, brother. You need to be able to take advantage of some of these teams that are either brand new coach or I done had to clean out all this team and I done had to get the mamas off Facebook and tell people if you want your son, you can come get him. You need to be able to take advantage of a game like this. Yes, it is. It is Miami. It is recruiting South Florida, the hotbed, uh, great hotbed for talent. You need to be able to win this game. There will be too many new pieces for you to be able to say comfortably, hey, we just lost it and that's okay. No, sir. You need to win this one. NC State travels to Wake Forest. Winston-Salem has been known the past couple of years as of late as a hostile territory for the Wolf Pack. You know, it's been a back-and-forth matchup between them and the Demon Deacons. We know that Clawson's going to give you a fairly perfect game. We know Sam Hartman is not behind the helm, but the Demon Deacons are still, to me, going to be an all-right program. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be a battle of the all-rights. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I mean this with everything in my heart and soul. If it. you cannot win this game, Coach Dorn, <laughs> if this game is one that you lose. Hell, I feel like everyone day near is about to be an assessment for you. I mean, listen, it's not an assessment. This is not. We ain't, e not, we ain't even got. I think the next one might be the one where we have to have a come to Jesus. This is not supposed to. That's what I'm saying. These are <laughs> these are games that you're supposed to win. That's my point. Yeah. You have to yeah. win the games that you're supposed to win. This ain't a measuring stick. No, this should be you uh, walking around and saying, hey, hey, hey. This is a this, standard. I know that you, you know, had our number when we come into your place. No, uh, no more. No more. And if 100%. you lose this one, again, some conversations need to be had. 
NC State faces Virginia Tech in the second and last matchup of the season. They'll head to Blacksburg. What Virginia Tech team are we getting this season? Lord only knows what Coach Pride could have turned things around, could have got rid of some bad luggage. But, you know, it's going to be a very interesting season for the Hokies for sure. I think NC State, this isn't. This cannot be a head scratcher. This cannot be one that they get caught slipping looking ahead to, of course, their rivalry game against UNC, which is their final game of the season. Him and Hooker put a root on this team. And uh, he, he <laughs> for, for the listeners who have seen the color purple, he had it until you do right by me, everything that you eat, everything that you do going to go wrong. Everything that they've you know, done right? has gone wrong for the most part. I mean, that. Yeah. Am I lying? That Coach man Fuente went- will pay for his sins. Coach Fuente will pay for his sins. He will pay for his crimes. You understand? I, it's against the Geneva Convention to do some of the things that he did and, and have us out here asking for ourselves. As, for as long as he did. <laughs> right? That's just a nonsense. NC State, I think, rose in this one. I don't think uh, – last year, even with, I want to say, MJ Morris was their, what, third string quarterback at that time? They came away with a win against uh, Virginia Tech. I think this should be another one where NC State. What's my buddy? What's my buddy Jack Chambers doing? I don't know. I'm. I, I'm sure he, probably, he, he got up. him a nine to five. He got him a nine yeah, to five. He, he's he's an enterprise great, program. He's a great business development rep wherever he is. I'm sure right. he's a. Right. He's probably leading somebody's sales team right now, crushing the numbers, crushing. Them. Thousand percent. Final game of the season will be at home for NC State. Thanksgiving time, bellies full and rivalry right down the street. They'll face off against North Carolina. Last season, Carolina fell out. They had it in the bag. They have Drake May. They have all the things. And then NC State gives them a nice little whooping. Reminds them that they were little brother. Can Drake May and the boys, can Drake not have a sophomore slump? Can they figure out a way to beat NC State? They Everyone knows that this is the rivalry game. If you are in the triangle area, I don't care what, how you slice, shake it, how you slice it, you want to beat all the schools in the triangle. And even that little extension brother there at Wake Forest. That's so interesting to me that this is now being called a rivalry because I remember for a while. They're, oh, they're real, they're oh, real. Not, but like, I think it's who are you listening to? Who are you? Uh, I think if you listen, if you talk to the actual players, they take this one very seriously. I, I believe it was uh never mind, we're not gonna go there today. The Please fact of the matter is, we got till November. I ain't trying to hear it. I really the fact know. of the matter is simple. When this game comes around, as we saw last year, throw out the records, throw out who True. you think is gonna win. This True. is pure unadulterated hate. This is I do not like you. I don't I don't like anything about you. I this is my sons cannot have baby blue blankets territory. This is everything about you is the antithesis of everything about me. And we're going to see who the better team is when we line up on the day after Thanksgiving. This is that game. And I'm going to okay, tell you, Jim this. Nance. OK, Jim Nance, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> And then the words of the bell, I stand by it. I guarantee it. It doesn't matter what else happens in your season. Mm -hmm. You put a beat down on UNC. I'm not saying that you had a good season, but you redeemed a lot of what happened. You redeemed a lot of what happened. You can look past. You blind a lot through what happened. Listen, if that's your last cut, that's all right. funky. You'll, you'll All right, be, so he, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. It's 10 years for Dorn. Mm-hmm. A 10 win season, he needs a bad. Mm-hmm. At what point do you reassess and say, maybe you should try your hand at something else? Is I mean, this the season? I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I know some Wolfpack fans are going to be mad at me when I say this, but I think that a lot more fans would be mad at me if they actually understood the context of this. There are about eight, nine programs in the nation where winning eight games a year ain't enough. There are eight or nine of those programs. NC State ain't one of them. I think, <laughs> I think, mm-hmm. I think Doran Cranks out a nine-win season this year because when you expect the least from NC State is when you get the most from them. And I think that a lot of very true. In, I think a lot of people are walking into this season saying, especially after the spring game, Oh, Brennan looks terrible. Oh, MJ can't make a read. Oh, y'all lost your top two receivers. 
Oh, the defense lost everybody and they mama. This is going to be a tough time. And I think that when you get them in that mode of nobody believes in us, everybody thinks we're a bad team, that's oh, when you get a wolf back that over before. Now, the minute that you say, oh, man, they up to something. They cooking something in Raleigh. They they start cooking uh, potato salad with raisins in it. You understand? They start cooking that stuff that makes you say, who let them cook? Who put them on the grill? But when you don't see him coming, when you don't see him coming, when you say, ah, save it, I don't want you to bring nothing to the cookout. That's when they bring them funky ribs with that perfect sauce. So I see them potentially getting a nine and four, 10 and three season this year. Interesting take. I personally have no faith in them because last season I thought they were going to win the ACC and that really pissed me off because it was hard enough believing in them. It was hard enough complimenting them every single chance, every single show I appeared on beyond just locked on ACC. So honestly, I'm indifferent. I ain't giving I you nothing. I, I ain't giving you nothing, it. NC State. I, I'm I not giving you nothing. What do you mean? They have 17 returners. And what do you what do you mean? They have 17 no, returners. No, like, what do what, what do you think? What I'm saying is if it's on your heart that it's hard to do, don't do it. I called UNC frauds all last year. I called them frauds all last year, and I was right. I was right. Them boys were frauds. I don't believe. No, okay, we we not we not doing lies. Oh uh, no 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 no. Here's the thing: you didn't call them frauds, but we don't have time for that today. For Candace Cooper and Kenta Gibbs, we have so much spring game coverage; it hurts us, but we cannot wait to give it to you. Please make sure you download, subscribe to the podcast from anywhere you listen to podcasts because, sincerely, we've got a lot for you this week. Clearly, this is game one. There are plenty more spring games and, honestly, season previews that we have to go through. So check us out. 